let's start with something probably obvious for all of you here. In our source, as you know, basically open source, but inside a company. And well, uh, it seems simple enough to just take those principles and try to make them work internally. Uh, you saw, well, back when I started working on inner source, uh, nearly 10 years ago, I was introduced to the open source three core pillars, openness, transparency, and meritocracy. Uh, these are some of the principles that are generally supposed to make open source so powerful. And But so, I started working with inner source and Actually, I, I quickly I quickly realized that bringing these principles into a company isn't as straightforward as it seems. And so, yeah, openness. Um, it's it's not uh, about being open to the whole company to to the whole world anymore. It's openness within the internal boundaries. This is the definition of open source at company level, sometimes at between entities, or even sometimes even smaller at, at department level. Meritocracy that often gives way to hierarchy and where roles and reporting lies takes the decision, particularly where in open source uh, you will promote a, 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 a contributor to a committer or maintainer level. Here, most of the time, you, you depend on hierarchy. Just give an example. Transparency, let's just say it often faces challenges and very often for, actually for good reasons, and for IT security reasons, for confidentiality reasons, whatever. So while the spirit of open source is there, the reality of adapting uh, it to the corporate world is uh, it's where things get, let's say, interesting. And I start by this introduction because yeah, it, it's from, from the reality, uh, the most common conclusion or pain points we have been hearing from years uh, is uh, things like that. It's, it's a problem of mindset. We need to change our corporate culture. This is a fault or middle or top management or, or people don't have time to, to do it because of this or this. And so I'm pretty sure it, uh, it sounds familiar to most of you. And these are the usual suspects that pop up whenever we talk about inner source challenges. And while well, there is some truth in them, uh, they, actually they don't really help, uh, they don't really help us. They don't help us to, to, to go beyond that. Um, again, yeah, just you all know what a company is. It's an organized entity with interconnected departments, roles, and functions to share objectives to generate profit. And this is how businesses operate, and that, that are the rules of the game. And it is here to catch. This same rule, while necessary, often sets the stage for the pitfall we encounter when trying to implement inner source and the create boundaries, hierarchies, priorities, that can clash with the principle of openness and transparency and collaboration that we are aiming for. And as I said, this is where things start to be interesting. And let's start, let's dive into the first pitfall, the tools. In inner source, uh, tools aren't just about managing work. Uh, they need to truly enable collaboration. And we, all the presentation on platform uh, explain that. But so from my experience, beyond any tool, uh, it, it, beyond any tool name, uh, the following things are really the most important characteristics. And they are, according to me, non-negotiable. Mutualized tool. Uh, this is an objective, yeah. Everyone use the same tool to reduce fragmentation. One single point of entry, a clear central pace in the organization, could be a catalog, could be a, a well-known tool like a GitLab or, or GitHub or whatever. Self-service, this is this is very difficult uh, because, yeah, uh, but empowering, empowering teams to act without constant admin requests is really key, for instance, for creating a repository. But it clashes with 
some of the security roles most of the time. Collaboration friendly features, tools that encourage shared ownership. And last and last but not least, no shadow IT. And even imperfect tools are better summarized than scattered. And you know, I've seen uh, companies with sometimes more than 30 separate instances of GitLab or plus other tools like Bitbucket or GitHub organization. And the result is, is chaos. It's no consistency, no collaboration, and, and that's it. Now let's let's go to the second pitfall, legal challenges. And when when we bring in a source into an organization, it's not just about sharing code. Issues like licenses, IP ownership. Basically, having a simple way for organization and management to define the use, modify, and distribution right that could be addressed by something like in a source license. And we can find other ways to do it in your, in your organization. But, and also taking into account tax implication and depending on the country's specific regulation can quickly become obstacle and if you, if you don't handle them or if, if you just ignore them uh, and if you don't take them seriously uh, as early as possible. And yes, uh, legal and compliance teams might seem like they are here to say no by default at first, but yeah, trust me, I, I've seen uh, I've seen some situation when the legal department can become some of your best allies and. I will come to, to a concrete example uh, later on on that one. Uh, finally, let's talk about the third pitfall, community. Uh, yeah, one, one of the biggest pitfall uh, is actually ever not taking at all and not taking care at all of creating a developer community. So just develop, putting in place, for instance, tooling or doing it the wrong way. Uh, what, what I mean by the wrong way it's, it's, is that a community is not all about communication. Uh, a strong inner source community needs much more than that. Uh, you need a clinic. If, if I take the analogy of medical domain, uh, you, need, you need a clinic, uh, a clear, accessible place where people can go for help with issues or, uh, and, and, and solve their problem. But if you have a clinic, you need doctors. So you need experts or champions who can provide that support, answer questions, and give contributors. And it's not only question and solving problems about inner source itself, or it's about the general problem of collaboratively developing software. And you, need, you also need to give recognition. Uh, this is a really key in a community, give recognition and incentives and, and Obviously, people are more likely to engage in if their contribution are celebrated and, and could be through formal rewards, public, and this is a great opportunity in, 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 the, corporate, in the corporate organization, in inner sources to, 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 to ask a manager, if possible, top manager to, to celebrate and to acknowledge the best people. So, while well, a healthy community doesn't just happen, it's its structure, it's internationally, internationally organized uh, and not only uh, as a way to communicate on inner you know, source problem. So let's, let's move on to the first, according to me, to the first key success criterion, the top level management support. For inner you know, source drive, you need at least, I would say, at least one. It's better if you have multiple uh, functions represented, but you need at least one senior leader ideally from a major company function. And their support stands a strong message, gives an initiative the visibility and credibility it needs. It's a great way to give recognition to some people. But there is a catch. To get that buy-in, you, you need to show them proven value. You need to convince them, to, to identify them. And, and well, uh, we, we have, you have different ways to do it, uh, showing them that we could accelerate development, working on silo, improving efficiency, demonstrating tangible results. Uh, but yeah, uh, this, is, this is what you need to, 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 to keep them engaged and to support you. 
I, I don't have time to develop much more on that one, but I would just give you, because I, I know people will ask me, yeah, yeah, but how to do it? So I, I, I take this one from, from an open source framework and where, where, you, where you use and you try to identify. And what's interesting here is that you can, you could go, and don't know if you already did it in your organization, if you are currently deploying uh, in our source, go function by function, find the value and convince the top manager. And by the way, you need to speak their language. And usually the language, this is the language of money. So show them how in also save times, reduce risk, and why not retain talent. And I know we are, and I am a community enthusiast, and this is great, but this is not enough to convince uh, uh, such a manager. And but this business value, as you know, is what what uh, what seals the deal. And here is the thing: it it could come uh, from any function uh, of the of the of your organization, and not not just the team actually managing the tool or the IT or engineering uh, management or engineering function. Uh, I can give you two examples, a uh, very successful example, or the, as, I, as I said, the legal teams could become a strong inner source advocate because for them, it, speed up, it could speed up their workflows, standardize uh, some part of the compliance and, and licensing, uh, and secure their channel uh, with engineering. So you solve a problem for them. I have seen some organizations when you solve the problem of part of the problem of, of the legal teams. Similarly, I have another example in human resource departments uh, who realize that proper tool and strong inner source community improve employee retention. Uh, we, we just had a talk on developer experience and in that case, uh, human resources realized that people were staying and some of the people were staying because they were they had the right resource and peer connection, peer connection thanks to the inner source community, and they were really happy with the tool, with the mutualized platform and tools coming with inner source. The next and last point is, uh, I think it's also critical, it's a critical success. It's building a healthy corporate developer community. So let's be clear. It's not just about creating a social media style community with most of the time an apprentice community manager sending a newsletter or video by email, well, or, or, or on a wiki. A healthy inner source community is focused, purpose driven, aligned with the company's goal. And it's about fostering real collaboration and solving problems. And not only the inner source problem, also the company problems together and driving value and showing value and not just creating another space for let's say conversation and to build it again you will ask me how to do it to build a healthy community developer community help, uh, yeah, to build a healthy developer community this is one of the reading grid uh, I like to use it comes, by the way, from an open source framework called the Community Member Quadrants, which identifies, uh, as you see here, the four types of communities, of corporate communities. Uh, yeah, again, let me just explain it then very quickly. If, if we use, again, a medical analogy, a servicing type uh, community is like a clinic that's aiming at solving problem, people's problem, typically like an inner source program office helping teams. A working group type is like, like a school, it's like classmates in a medical school and focusing on developing people's skills and through collaboration and having professionals. And this one is expensive. The broadcast type, I was mentioning that one, like, like a social media platform. I don't say it's not used, it could be a mix of all of them, but the problem with that for the broadcast type community is that it's a basically a one-way communication. We don't have a real interaction. And at the end, uh, employees and people are just consumers of the content. And the last one is what, what, what we call the full uh, goodwill type. It's, it's like a think tank of specialists, of, of the experts, and with high collaboration and time to share and solve, solve complex problems. And now, the 
I don't know if it's a surprising for you or not, but the broadcast model is the only one I have seen consistently fail for inner source. And, and, and yet, it's the one that most of the company, I, most of the companies I have seen use the most frequently. So, by the way, I think it's, it is popular because it's relatively easy to do. And the, the, but the problem with the broadcast model community is that's terrible at, at demonstrating any value for your management and to your company. And that's it for me. Thank you for your attention. I'm ready for, I hope I am on time. Uh, and I'm happy to take any question you have. Uh, just mentioning, yeah, you have my contact here. And since I'm a part of the French speaking local chapter, we are organizing uh, a gathering uh, <laughs> in uh, the beginning of December along with the open source uh, conference in Paris at that time, open source experience. So, Feel free to join and we'll be happy to, to meet you.